Okay, welcome back, everyone. The March madness over health care reform ended on Sunday in victory for President Obama and the Democrats. But are Republicans overplaying their hand on the issue when they say Democrats will be hit hard in the midterm elections? We get the view of David Winston, president of the Winston Group, also Erica Payne, founder of the Agenda Project. Great to see both of you. Uh, David, I'll, I'll let sure. you answer the question first. Are they well, overplaying their hand? No, no I mean, look. It, the bottom line is, uh, by a wide margin, and even in the NBC Wall Street Journal poll by 12 points, people didn't want this plan. So I think the Democrats have made an error. Having said that, the issue still here is jobs and the economy. And so as important as health care might be for the moment, the longer-term situation is what do jobs look like and what does the unemployment rate look like on the day of the election. So you think that's the more important issue in terms oh, of the overall economy and then health care folds in second to that? Yeah, no, I mean, to me, the, the critical question, and you've heard uh, House Republicans sort of focus on this is where are the jobs and I think that's what the electorate is focused on certainly they're following this uh, this bill and what's happened to it but ultimately it's going to be answering the question where are the jobs okay Erica you say they are overplaying their hand absolutely they're overplaying their hand you saw John McCain come out today and say that there's going to be no cooperation from the Republican Party from now until the end of the Obama presidency and the no cooperation reaction to a bill that helps 32 million Americans get health insurance is just immature and absolutely the wrong way to play it so they they've made a really critical error here in my opinion you know earlier today on CNBC I want to share this with you guys the uh, former GE chairman and CEO Jack Welch offered his forecast of what's going to happen in November and here's what he had to say take a listen I don't think they're going to get wiped out because I think the economy is picking up I mean the economy, the economy is going to feel good November is not going to look the Republicans are going to get an awful shock I think if they go we're running out there so David if the economy is in fact uh, looking better and everyone's feeling good come November what's that mean well, again, it, it depends what you define and how the economy is looking good. If GDP is up, that isn't enough. It's got to be you need People to, have to the, feel it, right? Yeah, it's got to be the unemployment rate. That unemployment rate's got to get down to below 8%. That's, that's where the Democrats and Obama said um, unemployment would be if you pass the stimulus package. It, remember, for, for, the United, for the average person out there, the output for the economy is not GDP. It's a job that actually lets them take care of their family. Erica, you heard what Jack Welch had right. to say. I mean, how, if everyone feels like things are a little bit better come right. November, what does that do when they go to the voting? Well, it's interesting because jobs in the economy are definitely going to be at the center of, of anybody's concern set when they walk into the voting booth. But what this is really about is leadership. And so there are two things that Americans like to look at when they go and make a decision about who they want to have lead their country. And one is, is the individual competent? And number two is, do they share their values? And so I think the Democrats have proven over the last day or two that they are absolutely competent. And they passed the biggest piece of legislation that we've seen out of the United States Congress. Congress in 50 years. So on the leadership side, they're going to get very high marks on the competence side. And on the second side, you have to look at whether or not they share their values. And while the the uh, health insurance reform bill was unpopular as a whole. You're starting to see those numbers shift. There's a new poll out right now that says that 49% of Americans actually support it. And when you go in and look at the pieces of the bill, like pre-existing conditions and, you know, for children and senior preventative care, and that kind of thing the parts are even more popular and so those two things taken together I think are going to set up a big win in November for Democrats and I so think no, Republicans have careful. shown that they yeah. can't even Republicans aren't even good in the opposition and they proved during the Bush presidency that they weren't good in the leadership and now they've proven that they're not even good in the opposition so I don't that's, really see where they go that's a, I would suggest a little bit of hyperbole there in terms of in terms of where the American people are in terms of this bill first off again going back to the NBC poll um, by a wide margin people weren't for this in this most recent poll uh, which is the Gallup poll you've had two three great days of press and not even half the country is for this and again the problem that you have with the bill it's not that there are, there aren't pieces in it that the country may like but you've got a half a trillion dollars in Medicare cuts and you have a half a trillion dollars in tax increases okay so sorry, it's just but too that, expensive but right. and we that. also have 138 billion dollars of deficit reduction and we have 32 million you know, Americans Erica, I don't who think are now going to have Wall health Street insurance that. I mean they did, they just point out the the voodoo accounting in this and they'll say well, you I mean, know let, 10 let, years no, of I mean, revenue I mean, for six years is absolutely 
really skeptical. nonsense. When the accounting um, actually comes out of the Congressional Budget Office, which is widely seen as an independent agency that has gone through agree, this budget to, up and down. To, and the fact of the matter is, most of the savings that are going to come out of this okay, bill are going to come in the second let, let David answer that. I, okay. mean, I, mean, I mean, two things. First off, the tax increases start tomorrow. The actual massive amount of benefits don't start for another four years. So you've got 10 years of income versus six years of expense. If you can't figure out some way to make that deficit reduction, I, I don't know wh where you're at in terms of being able to handle numbers. But the other thing, too, and again, particularly for the watches of, of this particular network, one of the big tax increases is going to be on exactly. investment mm -hmm. income, right? And so if you want to find a way to really stifle the economy, this bill came up with a way to do it. Absolutely. Erica, why not. did, well, well, go ahead. Why, why is that absolutely not? It seems How to me that as an investor, you know, I, I'm less likely to put money into the market if I know I'm going to be taxed at a higher rate. I might seek alternative investments. And the exactly. last thing this economy needs is money coming out of the equity market. So this bill has tax reductions for small businesses. Most job growth should come from small businesses. And so if you're looking at what is going to happen in the economy moving forward, this is absolutely a good thing for the economy. And yeah, what we've got to do the, over the long term, businesses, what businesses have, have got to do, is bring down their health care costs. 000. And this I mean, is they're, what they're, this bill does. What were but, you going to do? Leave it on the status quo? But bear with me, if you're going to talk about small businesses, the average income for a small business, for their employees, and that's six, six to ten employees, has to be 25000 What small business is paying their employees $25,000 on, on, in terms of a broad scale? Some are you and I to both hey, know real that quick, there's a tax cut we're almost in this out of time. What, what do you think, what's your advice for the Republicans right now? Do they need to really zero in on these tax increases? No, I mean, what they need to focus on, it, look, at this point, the Democrats have opened the door in terms of the electorate looking at Republicans. What Republicans have to do here is show that they're ready to govern by offering alternatives that people engage on, and that's the challenge now to the party. They're okay, looking. thank I, you I'll so much. Uh, unfortunately, we got to leave it there. Okay. I appreciate both of you joining us. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Pazar Ken Feinberg stepping up his screen.